Hey there, it's Rob the Tech Wiz here, and today I'm going to be starting a little tutorial mini series, I guess you could call it, on how to live stream for free. Now, I'm assuming if you're watching this video that you have a few things, that you have at least the hardware that you need to to live stream. Like if you want to live stream some PC gameplay or something like that, you already have a decent computer. And if you want to live stream some console gameplay, you already have a capture card and you already have it hooked up to your computer. Now, I have the capture card that I have is the Elgato Game Capture HD, and I've already done a tutorial on how to live stream to Twitch TV using only the Elgato software. Now, if that's something that you're interested, I'll put a link in the description to that video. But that's only if you want to live stream console gameplay with at most voice commentary over it. Um, the tutorial mini series that I'm going to be starting today is. Um, a little bit more in depth with your live stream like if you want to add a webcam or you want to add a graphic or an overlay to it or if you want to live stream to somewhere other than twitch tv um, that's what i'm going to be talking about today so the program that you're going to need to do that is called open broadcaster software um, so i'll put a link in the description to the website to download it um, it's just obsproject.com slash download um, it'll bring you to this page and on the left over here they'll usually have the current stable build um, sometimes over here on the right they'll have a, a build that they're working on. Um, I would just grab the one on the left. Um, it, it's always going to be the latest stable build. Okay, so once you go ahead and download that, um, open it up, and this is what you're going to see. Um, now a lot of people, if you've seen other tutorials or see other people live streaming, they might use a program called XSplit. Um, OBS is basically a free version of that. Um, some argue that it's better or worse, um, but all in all, uh, the biggest thing, the biggest reason I use it is it's free and it works really well. Um, so that's all I'm going to say on the XSplit part of it. Um, if you've used XSplit before, you prefer XSplit, go for it. But I'm going to continue using OBS because, um, like I said, it's free and the title of the video is How to Live Stream for Free. Okay, so the first part of the tutorial that I'm going to be going over is the general settings uh, that you need to set up in OBS. Um, that I, in the next couple parts I'll start talking about how to add scenes and how to add things to your live stream uh, like your capture card and your mic and your webcam and stuff like that um, so for now I'm just going to talk about the general settings um, so as soon as you open up the program go ahead and click the settings button right here and then you're going to be then you're going to see all these different categories of settings over here on the left the first one that you're going to open up to is um, just the general settings and what this pretty much is is you can select the language um, for the program and you can also have different profiles of settings like you can have settings if you settings for your different streams like I have a setting for my YouTube and my Twitch stream um, if you want to create a new setting like I've already done here um, just click in the box call it whatever you want in my case I call it a tutorial um, I don't know if it'll let me yeah but once you type it in it'll let you click add and it'll add it to the drop down list okay the next part and one of the most important parts is the encoding section um, so the very first thing that you're going to see um, is use CBR. Never check that. It's constant bitrate. You don't want to do that. Um, and then the next couple things, the next couple settings are going to vary based on you. Um, the quality balance, I always leave at 10. OBS um, says you should base it off of your bitrate speed in comparison to your um, frames per second that you have your video, that you have your stream set to. Um, but I just leave it at 10. I haven't really noticed too much of a performance difference. Um, but you can play with that accordingly. Now your max, max bit rate is going to depend on your upload speed of your internet. It's going to be the target um, average really max bit rate. Um, it's going to spike up and down. Um, it's not going to be at this constantly. Um, so that's something that you're going to need to find out for yourself. If you don't know what your bit rate is, go to a website called testmy.net do an upload test. Um, I think you can click on it's like an automatic smart test and it'll test your upload speed. Um, a lot of people including myself have used um, speedtest.net but I found this to be a little bit more accurate. Speed test sometimes gives you a little higher numbers than, than are accurate. For example if I ran my test on speed test it would probably give me around four, four and a half something like that. Um, but anyway the website gonna give it to you in megabits per second but you'll see um, they want it in kilobits per second. Um, so in short, multiply that number by about a thousand. If you want to get technical, it's a thousand twenty-four um, to multiply this number by, it, and that's going to be your your max upload speed for internet. Now you don't want to use um, your full um, upload bandwidth. 
Um, OBS recommends that you use 70 to, 70 to 80 percent of your overall upload test and they also recommend not going over um, 3500 kilobits per second even if you can um, especially if you're live streaming to Twitch and you're not partnered um, everyone that views your live stream is going to have to have a fast enough internet speed um, to be able to watch it at that high of a bit rate so that's something you want to keep in mind if you are partnered though then you can change the qualities and it's not so much a big a deal um, but I stream at about 2,000. Um, I probably could do more, um, but it's really not necessary. My streams look look pretty good. And if you're really not sure what to use here, once you've figured out what your max bit bit your max bit rate upload speed is, you can come to um, this website, obsproject.com/estimator. Again, I'll put a link in the description to this, and you can put in the specs um, of your graphics card your CPU and what kind of games you're going to play and then put in your max your max um, bit rate and it um, OBS will give you some recommended settings as far as FPS your quality um, and right here it gives you recommended max bit rate and buffer sizes um, I would just say also um, just leave this unchecked uh, unless you're familiar with what it what it is and you want to play around with it um, your safest bet is just to leave it unchecked. That's what I recommend. That's what OBS recommends also. Um, so the next section is audio encoding. I would definitely just use the AAC codec. I, I'm pretty sure it's the default. And as far as the bit rate, um, I use 192. Uh, there's a little bit of difference between 128 and 192. That's why I use 192. It's a little bit better. Um, but you really don't need to go any higher than 192. 192 sounds sounds pretty good, and you're not going to really hear too much of a difference. But if you have a little bit slower in inter internet and you want to stream at a little bit lower bit rate for your audio, then 128 sounds pretty good also. Okay, so no. The next section is broadcast settings, um, and this is where you're going to set up um, who you're streaming to. Um, I, uh, in this instance, it looks like I have this set up um, for YouTube. So if you are able to live stream on YouTube, once you set up um, your live event, you can click uh, Custom Encoder, I think it is, and it'll give you um, it'll give you a primary server and a stream name. I think YouTube calls it, and that's what you'll paste in here. You'll paste in your copy and paste your primary server here and your stream name here. Now, if you're streaming to whoops to say Twitch, what you're going to need to do is get your your stream key and that can be found at twitch.tv slash broadcast. Once you're logged in, it'll bring you to this page and if you click on show key, it'll show you what your stream key is. You can copy and paste that into OBS and then you'll be able to stream to Twitch TV that way. Um, your server, um, generally you just want to pick the service server or server closest to you. Yeah. Um, if you're familiar with Twitch, you probably already know what, what server you use and stuff like that. Um, so I won't talk too much on that. The auto reconnect, it's checked with a default timeout of 10. That just means if your um, your stream drops, it will auto reconnect or try to auto reconnect um, after 10 seconds. Um, a delay here in seconds. This is something like if you're streaming, say, some Black Ops 2 or some other FPS uh, online multiplayer game, and you're live streaming and you don't want people to watch your live stream and see where you are and try to come kill you based on that you can put a delay of like 60 seconds or 30 seconds um, so by the time people see it on your stream you're long gone from where from that spot um, dashboard link you can put a link to your twitch dashboard or something like that um, save to file here if you check this you can browse and name the file then it will record your stream at an mp4 file so you can keep it for later um, I don't do that it's up to you whether or not you want to and speaking to that also if you just want to use OBS um, to screen capture or something like that you can do that by selecting file output only and pausing and naming your file that way so just another cool feature of the program okay the next section is the video section um, now up here you're gonna see um, your graphics card whatever it is and your base resolution is whatever resolution you are viewing so it's the base resolution of your graphics card or you can select your monitor um, and then down here in this section um, you can choose whether or not to downscale like if you record at 1080p but you only want to stream at 720 you can downstream it to 7 or downscale it sorry to 720 um, 
the next section here, filter. It's a newer feature. I haven't played around too much with it. Um, when you're downscaling, you can choose from these three different filters um, to adjust the quality of the downscale. Um, I've streamed, I haven't, like I said, I haven't played around too much with this. I've only streamed it by linear, which says it's the fastest, and down to this one, which says it's the, the best detail. But I've streamed on this, and my, the quality's been pretty good. So it's up to you again if you want to play around with that. Um, disable arrow at startup. Um, I would do that, especially like it says here on this little notation, if you want to use monitor capture, like if you want to screen capture your monitor. Um, but that's also something, uh, yeah. If you come back to obsproject.com slash estimator, um, the game advice here, it'll tell you whether or not you should enable or disable it, but chances are it's probably best to disable it. Okay, the next section is audio. So the two things right up at the top are your desktop audio and your microphone audio. Um, you're gonna select um, whichever this is. Like, Chances are if you don't have a headset and you're just trying to capture the audio that's coming out of your monitor speakers or something like that, then you're just gonna wanna keep it on default. But if you're playing a game and you're wearing a headset and you're hearing the game audio through the headset, you wanna change this to the speakers on the headset and that's the audio that it's gonna record for that and your microphone here it's pretty self-explanatory if you're using a microphone um, just select it from this list and these two devices um, are what you're gonna see on this part these two controllers here this is your microphone audio adjuster and this is your desktop audio adjuster so whatever you have these two things set at that's the controls that are gonna change that um, these next couple things here are pretty self-explanatory um, push to talk to enable or disable your microphone um, you can have microphone hotkeys for mute and unmute. Um, you can force auxiliary to mono. Again, self-explanatory. I, I don't do that. I like to listen to it in stereo. I, I like my audio in stereo, rather. Um, then here's a couple boosts for your audio if you want to boost the desktop audio. You can raise this up. The default is one. Again, the microphone uh, auxiliary boost, the same thing. Uh, I have it at three because especially when I'm live streaming, if I'm live streaming for a while, I'll start to mumble or get quiet. So it'll just help boost your audio, make it a little bit lower. Then microphone time offset. Um, once you start live streaming, you'll notice that there's a little bit of delay, especially if you have a, a capture card like the Elgato or a Hop Hog or something like that. There's going to be a delay from the game and your voice. Um, so you can put a delay on the microphone to try to sync that up. But I'll talk about that in more detail in a later part of, of this tutorial series um, on how to sync everything up with your, your game audio, micro audio, microphone audio, and your webcam. Um, but again, that's something that you have to play around with yourself. But like I said, I'll have a more detailed video later on for that. Um, now your advanced settings. Uh, chances are you probably shouldn't play around too much with this, so I'm not going to explain too much I'll just tell you what I have my settings at and what OBS recommends and it's what I recommend also if chances are if you have a newer CPU you can check this you have multi-threading capabilities um, check that and use the multi-threaded optimization your process priority class um, I would recommend keeping it on normal at most go above normal if you have a little bit faster CPU um, right here this is really important the CPU preset um, changing this is going to greatly affect your CPU performance. I for sure wouldn't recommend changing it off of very fast even if you can. Um, the way this works is it's pretty much the it's basically the the amount of time that the CPU spends on encoding. So the slower you go technically the better quality it's going to be but even OBS um, a help page on their website says that even changing it too faster or fast isn't going to really get um, isn't going to get you give you enough quality to justify cutting into your CPU. So I for sure just let that at very fast and leave it at that. Um, don't mess around with any of this stuff unless you know what it is. Um, again, I wouldn't mess around with any of this. You shouldn't need to. And leave this to default. Um, okay, no. This is this is a newer feature in OBS, at least as of now when I'm making the video. Um, and I haven't played around with this either. What it is is you can just um, change the thres threshold noise levels, um, like if your voice or the the audio around your microphone gets below a certain decibel level, it will turn off the microphone. Then when it hears uh, noise again, it will turn back on the microphone. Um, that's up to you whether or not you want to use that, but I'm not going to get into too much detail on that. Um, so that pretty much 
sums up the general settings that you need for OBS. Um, so I'm going to end this part here. Um, if you have any, any questions at all, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to them as best as I can. Um, if not, you want, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can um, tweet at me and I will try to answer questions that way also. Um, like I said, I'll be making a couple more parts to this video. Links to all the descriptions that I mentioned throughout the video will be in the description, as well as a link to my Twitter. And um, oh, also, when I was mentioning um, in the encoding section where you can choose um, no broadcast. Um, if you're not if you're not partnered with YouTube, you're not going to be able to live stream to YouTube. So if you don't have your YouTube channel partnered, but it's something that you want to look into to be able to live stream on YouTube, I'll put a link in the description to uh, an application you can try to you can apply for a partnership with the company that I'm partnered with, RPM Networks. Um, so I'll put a link in the description of that, and they will look at your channel. And as long as you don't have any strikes and you have, um, they don't have. They used to have a daily view um, minimum requirement, but they do not have that anymore. So um, I'm not really sure what exactly they look at to partner channels now. But the most important thing is that you don't have any strikes and your channel's in good standing. Um, so go ahead and fill out the application and they'll look at your channel and decide whether or not they want to partner you and hopefully you'll be able to live stream on YouTube then. Um, but like I said, that pretty much sums up this part. I definitely appreciate a like rating if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful and keep an eye out for the next couple parts to the series. Thanks for watching. Bye.